All right. Hello, everyone. It's just me, your girl, Hannah, today. I've been getting some nice messages from listeners of the podcast and followers that you appreciate some of the solo episodes we've been dropping here on the Dream Life is Real Life podcast. And today I felt inspired to talk a little bit about something that I have definitely discovered in my own journey. And I'm hearing come up in other coaches and entrepreneur friends and clients that I work with. And that's this sneaky little thing called self-sabotage. So you might call it lots of other things, but what I'm talking about today is these times when we know we could be doing more. We know that we have more inside of us. We know better even, and we find ourselves still running up against the same obstacles, whether it's within our limiting beliefs in our mindsets, whether it's the same conversation we have to keep having with our teammates or with your partner, right? And we know as people who take 100% ownership for our lives and our success and our outcomes, that when the same thing keeps happening, when we keep repeating the same patterns, you know, it's ultimately our thing, right? So if you're noticing yourself running up against the same obstacles or just staying in the same place, kind of like you're on this hamster wheel of the same problems every month or the same questions every night before you go to bed, then this conversation will definitely be helpful for you. If you are cruising and growing and in a great place, then save this one for your next plateau or the next time you're feeling a little bit stuck a little bit self sabotage as I've come to know and understand it. And really the conversation starts with goals, more specifically setting big goals, right? The fact that you are listening to this conversation or tuning in today means that you're likely interested or at least curious about moving past where you're at right now, right? You're looking for education, you're looking for support, you're looking for mentorship, and you've come to the right place if you're ready to move past where you are now to reach a bigger impact, you know, specifically in your business. But these principles, just like everything I talk about, are tried and true success principles, okay? These are things that will be true for you, whether you have a business or you just have a life, okay? But what we know throughout our lives, and especially in business, that more of the same produces more of the same. So if you're, again, if you're fine with where you're at, then find, you know, bounce now. But if there's something inside of you that's like, maybe I'm not fine, maybe I want something more, right? It doesn't have to come from a place like I have to fix this. It could come from a place like it does for me a lot of like, I know I'm meant for more. I know there's a bigger mission. I know there are people waiting for me um, and I want to show up in bigger ways. So more, like I said, more of the same produces more of the same in many aspects of our lives. And what I've discovered in working with hundreds of coaches and entrepreneurs in the last several years is that we can be hesitant to set new goals especially if you started out like I did with a big goal, right? Like I'm going to change the world or I'm going to hit six figures or I'm going to be a millionaire. Like whatever that like big thing was initially that set you onto this path was scary enough to get you started and get you to take action. But when it comes to take that stretch goal, one that doesn't sound as like exciting or you've, you've learned a little bit already on your journey. So it's a little bit like, oh, like set another goal like that, right? Business owners can be very hesitant to set big stretch goals. And I've narrowed down the resistance into four reasons or four things that we run up against. And it's all, you know, something that all things that we have control over. That's what I'm talking about self-sabotage today. So we're going to talk through these four reasons, and then I'm going to give you um, four or five exercises, things that you can take with you into your day and marinate on to understand what it is that is holding you back and where you might want to focus your energy to stop repeating the same, same patterns and same sabotage. Okay. So the first resistance, number one, is that you think you need to do it all. Classic overwhelm, right? You, you can't see how that big stretch goal would actually be possible. You're already like, 
doing a lot, you're, you're doing your best, you've, you've invested, you've tried a lot of things, you know, but you haven't figured out what it actually would be like for you, like how you would actually 10x your business or do something because you haven't reverse engineered exactly how it would happen. It's all just like big and overwhelming and you think you need to do it all. You haven't really taken the time to see, you know, what would a 2x goal look like? What pieces would I need to plug in? What people would I need to hire? What processes would I need to implement? You, and you haven't done the same for a 5X goal or a 10X goal. And look, I'm not saying you have to 10X your business just because it's possible. But if you actually take the time to reverse engineer, what does it look like for me to have a 100K month? What does it look like for me to have a, a schedule where I only work 20 hours a week? What does it look like? like? What does that actually look like in reverse engineer it? So this is something we've been doing with one of my clients, Lindsay. She has a goal to hit 20K in her business and work 20 hours a week. And so for the last several months, we've taken a reverse engineered plan of how many other coaches she's going to need on her team, how many systems she's going to need in place, how many clients she's going to need to hit those goals. And now we're reverse engineering, taking time away from her plate and bringing clients in right? So you, you don't have to do it all. That's the first thing that trips us up. You think you need to do it all. And really that comes down to a reverse engineering plan. Okay. The second thing that trips us up is that you think you have to sacrifice everything else, right? Maybe you've burnt yourself out in the past because you've put everything into the business or you've put everything into your you know, one goal and then the rest of your life gets kind of messy, let's say, right? So you believe you have to work too hard or you have to work longer hours to achieve that next big level. And perhaps you're at a place right now where you're already overwhelmed and you're already overworking and you're thinking, how can I possibly create an even bigger business? Like, this is what I got. Look at all this energy I'm already putting into it. I don't want to have to tap into my weekends. I don't want to have to tap into my family time. So we believe that we'll have no life, right? There's this belief that more clients equals more problems. And that keeps us playing small. Okay, so you think you got to sacrifice or really, you know, you're thinking worst case scenario. Yeah, well, if I get all those clients then it's going to be a lot of work, it's going to be really hard. I'm going to mess up more. There's going to be more problems and more mistakes, which doesn't have to be your truth. Okay, so the third thing, right, we've gone through number one, you think you need to do it all. Number two, you think you have to sacrifice everything else in your life. And now number three, you think you have to become a superwoman to deserve more success. Okay, I was just talking to a peer this morning. And she's talking about, yeah, like, I want what that other coach does. Like, I see that and I want that. But I don't have the emotional mastery to be what she is. We think we have to become this like bigger leader and this more confident person and this girl who has all of her stuff together in order to deserve more success. Let me know if that resonates with you because this one is definitely true for me, right? Well, if I want to have a team, then I have to be this amazing leader and I have to have everything organized and my schedule has to be perfect and I have to show up and be just perfect at everything if I expect a team and clients to you know, grow with me. So even if you do have a team right now, you still feel like everything rests on you, right? At the end of the day, you're 100% responsible. You're the, the last stop on this machine, right? If something goes wrong, like it's all on your shoulders. So how can you reach for even more? Or why would you want to reach for that kind of stress, right? It can, again, seem really overwhelming. Like you're the only dragon slayer. Like you have to, you know, be wearing the hat of... CEO, salesperson, leader, coach, and like mentor, and like mom to your team. You're the bookkeeper, right? You're like playing all these roles. And so you feel like you have to be superwoman and learn how to be bigger and better at everything before you're ready for that next level. So we stay stuck and we keep doing more of the same. Okay, we'll just keep on this hamster wheel, like I said, of just kind of maintaining where we are right now instead of going for exponential growth. 
and leaning into this, right? You guys have heard me say before that entrepreneurship is the biggest form in personal development. So if you think where you are right now and everything you're doing, da, 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 like that you're gonna reach some like final pinnacle of it, that's not true, right? But you can work smarter instead of harder and not become superwoman, but become savvy woman, right? Not do it all, but become savvy in your business and as a leader. That's how we talk about that third hesitation where you think you have to become superwoman to deserve more success, okay? And then the last one, the resistance that comes when I ask, you know, business owners or people like, all right, what's the next big goal? Like, are you look, what are you looking to achieve next? Is you think you're just fine. It's fine. I'm okay with just earning this much. Like I'm okay doing everything on my own. You have enough, you're taken care of, it's working okay, right? And, and there's this other limiting belief that I run up against. And maybe it's not a limiting belief because we'll talk about this, but I've definitely identified a pattern of my self-sabotage where I go into, well, you should just be content and grateful for what you have. And I've done that, right? There are seasons where that is, yes, I wanna lean into this. And I've had seasons where my coaching, like from my coaches is just to like be present and enjoy the moment and don't go pushing for more right now because so much of what you have right now, Hannah, is stuff that was a dream just a few months ago, right? So this is totally a place that I'm kind of in right now to be totally honest, where it's working, we're good, it's fine right? We don't constantly have to be pushing. Sometimes we get to enjoy the fruits of our labor, right? However, if this is something that doesn't feel right for you, that it's like, Ugh, I'm not fine. I'm just saying that because I don't know, I got comfortable, right? But you know, you've seen a bigger vision for yourself. You know, it's time, you know, you desire to take yourself, your team and your impact to the next level. Then you run up against this, you know, limiting belief that, you know, I should, I'm fine. I should just stay here in my comfort zone because if I push again, I might get embarrassed. Okay. That's really what's going behind this. I'm fine, right? This is fine. I just want to stay here. If I go bigger and I push harder, I might get embarrassed. Okay. We've already talked a lot about how it might be more work, how it might be more time, all of those things. But what if at the root of your self-sabotage, was the fear of being embarrassed. What if I don't actually reach that next goal? What if I fail along the way? What if I, you know, make blunders on social media or I, you know, say the wrong thing on a sales call or I forget my new prices, right? Like all these little things, you know, what will the team think? What will the clients think? What will family think if that's still something you're carrying around, right? So it's better to just not set the stretch goal because you can just, you know, work on being content, right? And that's valid for some of us. But again, if you're listening to this and thinking, I'm, I'm content, I, I think I'm playing small though, then it is better to set a stretch goal, right? But if you keep focusing on building your business in incremental steps, right? Rather than big leaps, then you can overcome most of these blocks, right? But especially with, you know, for me, again, like I think I'm fine. If I want to go to that next level, like it might be big and scary and embarrassing, right? So the antidote to that is to just take small incremental steps instead of thinking about this massive leap, you know, maybe thinking about six month goals instead of five year goals is a great way. And really how I'm getting myself to just keep moving forward and thinking about growing, even when I know like, I'm fine, I could be content. I could just do mindset work on this. Does that make sense? So let's again, just recap, and then I'll give you the, the five questions that you can take with you. So number one, you might be resistant to setting new goals in your business or bigger goals in your life because you think you need to do it all and you haven't figured out how you could put the puzzle pieces of systems and support and delegation together to get to that next level. Number two, you think you have to sacrifice everything else. You're worried about burnout. You think you're going to forget about your friends and your family, and you're just going to become all consumed and maybe obsessed even with your business. 
Number three, you think you have to become a superwoman to deserve more success. You think you need to learn more, become more, practice more, wait more, try harder. And then one day, someday in the future, you'll be ready to be the perfect leader. Okay. And then the fourth thing is that you think you're fine here. I can just be content. I can just settle for this. I shouldn't really push myself to want more. Like I did it. This is great. I'm just going to, you know, settle here when really that isn't your truth. And you've taken a look at that and you know that you do want more and you're ready to take some incremental steps to grow yourself and grow your business and step into your dream life, you know, day by day. So are you ready? Here are the five things that you can journal out today or this week or even this month. We're not, we're not at the top of the month here. Um, so this is also something you might come back to, like I said, when you're finding yourself in self-sabotage or maybe if you have like an annual or quarterly review practice, add these in. First question, is it that you can't see how you would get it done? Right, that kind of goes back to that first one. Like, is it that you just can't see it? Yes or no? Either way, then go see it. I always tell my clients who are like, I don't know, I can't see it, I don't know. Then I say, take a wild guess. It can be silly. Just take a wild guess as to what it could look like for you to get it done. Once you have that kind of decision and declaration, I'm gonna take a big stretch goal. Number one, is it that you can't see how you would get it done? Then just guess what might it look like and journal on that a little bit, okay? Number two, the second question to ask yourself, is it that you don't know how you would reach that goal, okay, um, doing what you're doing right now, right? So this is, again, this invitation, you know, doing is, I guess a better, let me reframe, is what you're doing right now going to get you to that stretch goal? Is more of the same going to get you more of the same? Do you just need to do more of it? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, it's not just about doing more, then again, we open up this discussion for innovation, right? So again, if you just had to guess what could be a new way to operate your business, just let it be silly. Just get all the bad ideas out on paper. And then number three, you know, are you up against this fear that you'd have to work too hard and sacrifice everything else, right? So take a look at what comes up when you start to think about these new ideas. And are you running up against, I would have to work a lot? Let's just see if that's something that's in your, your mind right now. Because if it is, we can work with it. If it's not, great. We can look at what is your self-sabotaging belief, okay? So number one, is it that you can't see how you would get it done? Yes or no? Number two, is it that you don't know how you, like you don't know what you're, number two, is it that what you're doing right now, you don't think is gonna get you there? Is doing more of what you're doing right now gonna get you there? Yes or no? And then number three, do you see yourself having to work too hard to make it happen? Number four, would you feel alone or overwhelmed in that next level of your business? Is that something that, yeah, loneliness, overwhelm. Yeah, I could see that. You know, maybe I'm afraid that the current mentors I have like won't be the right fit. Or maybe I'm worried that the clients I have right now, like, you know, like maybe you're worried about that kind of scarcity that you'd feel alone or overwhelmed. Just be honest with yourself there. And then the last thing is, how would you feel if you didn't reach your goal? And would it be embarrassment? For some of us, we look at goals as just like a game, you know? Oh, if I didn't reach that goal, I would just set another one. Oh, I would just have learned a lot, even if I didn't reach that goal. But are you still tying some of your worth to looking good or to proving yourself? And is this goal actually coming from a place of fear? Like, oh, I got to do it to prove myself. And if I don't, I will be embarrassed or I will be a failure, right? So just this like brain dump, right? We're not making any decisions. We're not making any game plans. We're just starting to look at the beliefs that we're carrying around and the things like fear, loneliness, overwhelm, you know, lack of a vision that most often keep us stuck. And like I said, you might be an outlier and there might be something here, you know, in your, your subconscious that's holding you back or helping you self-sabotage new goals. But especially with coaches and entrepreneurs, these are the things that I see holding them back. Overwhelm, 
sacrifice. I have to be better before I deserve it. And maybe I can just stay small is really the conversation that comes in and out of every coaching call that I get to have with folks who are thinking about setting new goals or taking themselves to the next level. So again, save this, get out a journal, block some time if you're type A like me to fit in some of this woo-woo examination, because I can promise you that when you overcome the limiting beliefs and those things that you're not even conscious to, right? But you keep running up against and having the same problems around or talking about or thinking about over and over. Let's really get to the root of it and see if you, you might be afraid of overwhelm, embarrassment, loneliness, or just working too much. Because when you have some clarity on what you're afraid of or what you're avoiding, you can again reverse engineer how you would avoid that fear. Not that, you know, some of avoiding it is like going through it, right? But for so many people, like I mentioned, you know, Lindsay, it's like, man, I want 20K in 20 hours a week. And I'm embarrassed because I might not get there. I don't know how I would get there. And so once she decided, yes, like that is true for me, that resonates, then we got to reverse engineer, set up her mindset with all this awareness then set up the systems, the team, the processes so that she's, you know, on track for this goal that she's set. So let me know what questions you all have. Happy journaling, taking a look inward. I'll run through them one last time. Number one, is it that you can't see how your goal would get done? Number two, is doing what you're doing now going to get you to that next level? Or might you have to start thinking outside the box? Number three, would you see yourself having to work too hard to make this goal happen? Are you afraid of burnout, overwhelm? Number four, would you feel alone in making it happen? Are you afraid of what it might do to relationships? And number five, would you be embarrassed if you didn't reach your goal? Be honest, enjoy, and let me know what comes through for you.